Good morning. I'm inviting you this wonderful morning so that we may be blessed together in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this wonderful morning that even as we dine in your word this wonderful morning, I pray that may you speak to our hearts, speak to our spirits, even in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rebuke us where you want us to be rebuked and correct us where you want us to be corrected for the glory and honor of your name. And it's in the name of our Lord Jesus, we do pray and even believe. Amen. Now, in the beginning of this week, we began a series on Lord, align my heart with yours. Now, yesterday, we were learning some of the powerful object lessons that we can learn from the life of Jonah. And yesterday, we learned that Jonah, he quit serving God and others. He also separated himself from others. He also became a spectator instead of being involved in the, in the service of God. He also, Jonah's anger also shows us that he wanted a plant to be saved instead of the people of Nineveh. Today, we are going to look at the final rebuke. The final rebuke. The reason why I'm calling it the final rebuke it is because God had rebuked the servant of God before. He had rebuked his servant before. Now, this morning, let us read from the book of Jonah, chapter number 4, verses number 9 to verses number 11. The Bible says, And God said to Jonah, Does it thou well to be angry for the God? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Verse number 10 says, Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the guard, for the which you have not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night, and perished in a night. Verse number 11 says, And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much kettle, and also much kettle. Now, I want you to know this wonderful morning that God went after Jonah's heart. God went after Jonah's heart. Why did God go, go after Jonah's heart? It is because, just as the way we learned on Monday, that his heart was filled with a lot of displeasure, his heart, his heart was filled with a lot of uh, fury. His heart was filled with anger. He had anger issues. So God went after Jonah's heart. Jonah, God went after Jonah's heart. I also want you to know that he was exposing his lack of compassion for the people of Nineveh. He was exposing his lack of compassion for the people of Nineveh. Just as the way we learned yesterday, that Jonah wanted plants to be saved instead of the people of Nineveh. So this morning, we are learning that he was exposing his lack of compassion for the people of Nineveh. Brethren, let me tell you this morning that even as the way God is calling us to do evangelism, even as the way God is calling us to serve him, one of the things that should feel or should feel a heart of a, believe, of a believer, you should be filled with compassion. You should be filled with the spirit of compassion so that we, as you go out there, you may be able to serve the people of God. You should serve the people of God. So I want you to know this wonderful morning that God was exposing his lack, the lack of compassion uh, of the, for the people of Nineveh because he didn't have that compassion for the people of of Nineveh. That's why he was running away. Yeah? That's why he was running away from the service of God. That's why he was, he, he, he was running to Tarshish instead of him going to, to, the, to serve the people of Nineveh. I also want you to know this wonderful morning that God is revealing to us that this prophet, prophet Jonah, or the, this prophet's heart did not reflect his father's heart, his father into bracket God. He didn't reflect the heart of the father. And how do we know the heart of the father? In the book of Jonah, chapter number, in the book of John, chapter number three, verse number 16, in the book of John, chapter number three, verse number 16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want you to know this wonderful morning that the heart of God is a heart full of love. The heart of God is a heart full of compassion. Just as the way the scripture tells us in John chapter 3 verse number 16, for God so loved the world. The reason why he loved the world, it is because he had compassion. He had compassion towards the world. Yeah? He loved sinners. He loved the people, he, he loved the people in the world. That's why with this morning, we are saying that the heart of the Father is the heart full of love. And also we are going to read from the book of Matthew 28, verses number 19 and 20. The Bible says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, the reason why Jesus Christ is telling us to go, it is because he has the heart of the Father. You cannot go out there if you don't have the heart of the Father. And that is the way, that is uh, what happened to the life of uh, the servant of God by the name of uh, Jonah. He didn't, the, we, are, we are learning that God is revealing to us that this prophet's heart did not reflect his father's heart. This wonderful morning, I'm here to tell you that our hearts should reflect our father. We should be filled with love. Instead of being filled with displeasure, instead of being, fi being filled with anger issues, we should be filled with, uh, with, uh, with, we should be filled with the love of God. We should be filled with the love of the Father. I also want you to know that God cares for the vilest of sinners and he commissions us to share the message of salvation with those who are from him. With those who are from him. You see, God was so much concerned with the people of Nineveh. That's why he was sending the servant of God by the name of Jonah. Yes, John, the, the, the city of Nineveh, or the, the, the city of Nineveh, it was a country or it was a city that was filled with a lot of sin. But God was so much concerned with them. But we see here the servant of God by the name of Jonah is being sent, but he's feel, he, he, he's afraid of going. He's, he is afraid of going. I want you to know this wonderful morning that God cares for the vilest of sinners. It doesn't matter how sinful they are, God cares for them. So sometimes God may send you to someone, eh? and when you try to think that God cannot save such a person, I'm here to tell you this wonderful morning that God cares for such a people. He loves them the way they are, the way they are. In their messes, he still loves them. God may send you to a drunkard. Maybe that person has been, has been drinking for the past 30 years, and God is sending you to that person, and you are afraid. Don't be like Jonah. I'm here to tell you this wonderful morning that God cares for the vilest of sinners. He loves them even in their messes. Go to them, deliver the word of God. The word that you are going to deliver is not your word, it is his word. Just deliver that word and that person by the power of God, they shall be delivered and they shall be, they, they, they shall be, they shall be delivered and they shall be free from whatever has been, has been uh, troubling them. So you just deliver the word of God. I also want you to know this wonderful morning that God relentlessly, relentlessly pursues us to save us and God saves us to change us. Are we together? That God changes, God saves us to change, to change us. I want you to know this wonderful morning that God relentlessly pursues us. He relentlessly pursues us. Not for any other thing, but to save us. That's why he, he pursued, he relentlessly pursued the servant of God by the name of Jonah. Even when Jonah was, uh, even, was, even after Jonah was swallowed by that big fish, God still pursued him even in the stomach, in the stomach of that fish. I want you to know this wonderful morning that God relentlessly pursues us to save us. Then after he has saved us, he changes us. He doesn't leave you the way you came to him. He doesn't leave you the way you came to him. 
So I'm here to tell you this wonderful morning that uh, 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 God is saving you so that you may be able to save other people too. He wants to change you. Then after he has changed you, he wants you to also to use you to save other people. So stop running away from the service or from the work that God has called you to do. Focus on what God has called you to do and serve him and uh, you'll, God is going to use you to serve other people. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you because of uh, this wonderful morning. Thank you because of ministering to us, Jehovah Father, even this wonderful morning on how you care about the sinners, Jehovah Father. I pray that, Lord, may you give us a burden even to serve you for the glory and honor of your name, Jehovah Father. Father, we thank you and we honor your holy name. I declare this wonderful morning, this wonderful morning, that even as we go out in our duties, Lord, I pray that you are favoring us, your glory is upon us, your goodness is upon us, the favor of God is upon us in the name of Jesus. And we are manifesting your glory out there in the marketplace for the glory and honor of your name. And it's in the name of our Lord Jesus we do pray and even believe. Amen. <music>